driving from Dallas through Oklahoma to Arkansas to visit my family. It was hot and sunny back in Texas. I was sweating while I was driving. But almost as soon as I crossed the Oklahoma border, hit a cold front. The temperature dropped about 20 degrees. Feels really great. So make a good progress on my trip. Passing through Oklahoma, you can find what you're looking for. Weed dispensaries, casino gambling, liquor stores, firework stands. In my case, cheap gas. The fuel pumps are a full 30 cents lower here than they are back in Texas. Driving along the highway, the billboards read suicide, depression, abuse hotlines. In a real way, the mimics the challenges the U.S. faces in this moment. I went with my mom up into the Ozark Mountains to learn about her life growing up in a rural town there. We saw the war memorial and how the community had been divided with soldiers dying on both sides of the conflict. One day in the Second World War, he was stationed in San Luis Obispo, California, and when he had a furlough, he would arrive here and we'd pick him up at the train station. And it was an exciting day when Daddy came home. Man, you talk about happy. sits on the bank of the Arkansas River. Its name comes from the French phrase, aux arcs, meaning with bows. This fertile land was settled by Irish and German immigrants, of which I have both in my family lineage, almost 200 years ago. Stepping down to the bluff, I received a gorgeous view of the river below. A traveling show came through, and Mother took me to see it. They had a dog in the show. And the dog was trained when they shot the blanks that he would fall over dead. Well, I didn't realize that it was fake. I thought they'd killed the dog. And I screamed and cried, and Mother had to take me out. I mean, I was terribly upset that the poor dog was dead. In nearby Altus, we walked where my mom lived as a child. She told me of her grandfather, Dado, and his resilience as a coal miner there. Dado, you know, his, my, his, right, he was right-handed and his right hand was injured. But he built that garage by himself, roofed his house by himself, he dug a cistern by himself. He was very much a go-getter. I'm telling you, he didn't let his hand keep him from doing whatever he wished wanted to do, he did it. In reflecting on the stories my mom told of her childhood, it struck me how we must regain those values of togetherness and community if we're going to heal our divisions. There is a disconnect in this beautiful land, a lack of common ground, 
a spiraling of mental health issues, and a proliferation of high-powered weaponry. It is demonstrated by the inaction of politicians who represent their corporate and special interest lobbyists and seek to demonize anyone who questions them or their motives. But I also see my complicity in feeding the beast of corporate America, in harboring enmity, and not taking the time to get to know my neighbor, and taking for granted my own privilege. I grew up in rural America. I'm someone who wants a better life for my children, one with less violence, with hope for something better than we have given them up to now. But I will do my part to build community and envision a better future for us all and to encourage responsible citizenship. Where is the land of the free and the home of the brave? It is in the hearts of our children who endure more violence than they ever should have to. The media who distort reality and politicians who do nothing must look these children in the eyes and if they still will not enact change, then they must be replaced by others who will. I feel gratitude to learn the lessons of my ancestors and for the possibility to do my part in bringing healing to this land. Mm -hmm.